Greetings and welcome to the graphics class. We will have an introduction about isometric projections. What is isometric projections? So far we were discussing about orthographic projection. In orthographic projection, if we are having a solid like this, we are drawing the front view and top view. If necessary, we will go for the side view also. But here, you are having only a two-dimensional view, whether it is front view, top view or side view. But in the case of isometric projection, you will get a three-dimensional view. So, isometric projection is a three-dimensional drawing. Consider this square prism. If I am keeping the solid like this, you can see only one face of the solid. If I am keeping it like this, that is, the, all the base edges are equally inclined to VP, here you can see two faces. Suppose I am keeping it like this. Here, what you can see is, you can see the front, uh, the one, one, one base edge, then two sides also, lateral surfaces also. What is the peculiarity of this particular position? You are keeping the solid diagonal perpendicular to the vertical plane. What is a solid diagonal? Solid diagonal means there is a corner at the base. There will be an opposite corner at the top base. You are connecting the top base and opposite bottom base corner using a straight line. Imaginary line. That imaginary line is actually known as the solid diagonal. Here I am keeping the solid diagonal perpendicular, perpendicular to VP. So you can see this particular portion that is one base and two lateral surfaces you can see. That is an advantage for you. Even with one view itself, you can clearly mention about the three faces. That is the advantage of isometric here, I have drawn a similar figure of a cube. That is, you can see the top side and two lateral sides. Since it is a cube, all the sides are equal. So, I have marked this as side 1, this as side 2 and this is side 3. What is this point? This point represents a perpendicular line which is actually the solid diagonal. The solid diagonal is perpendicular to the vertical plane. So you are getting a <coughs> three dimensional view of a cube. There you can see three faces of the cube. That is the advantage. Now what, what is the importance of this particular figure in isometric projection? We can come to the next figure. In this particular figure, you can see I have actually uh, drawn, redrawn that particular figure like this. Here you can see all the sides of uh, all the sides of this particular solid are at an angle of 120 degree. They are mutually at 120 degree. That is one thing. If I am having a horizontal line like this, then with the horizontal line, this angle is 30 because this part is 90 and this part is 30. Total this 120. Similarly, you will get the other side also as 90 plus 30. So, I have marked that 30. I am having a horizontal line here. Now, see, these are the edges of the cube. Suppose this is the true length of the cube. AB is the true length of the cube because AC is an inclined edge. It won't give you the true length. So, AB will give you the true length. Assume that this is the true length. If this is the true length, then this angle should be true inclination. If you are having a cube like this, you are having say half the angle as 45 because if you are having 
completely the exact dimensions what will happen this will be 90 so i am having an angle which is half of that which is 45 degree so this is 45 and this inclination with the horizontal line is actually 30 degree because this is 30 so this should also be 30 so based on this i am getting a particular construction here that is a b c if I am inverting that particular uh, figure that is ABC like this, then this is known as the isometric scale. Why I am calling it as isometric scale? Because AB will give you the true length. Here, this is AB. So, AB is giving you the true length. BC. BC is marked like this because here it is 45 degree. So, I am marking from B, uh, say the angle A, B, C as 45. So, this is 45, this is 15. So, 180 minus 45 plus 15, that is 60, that will be 120. So, this angle, angle A, C, B will be 120 degree. So, this is a typical isometric scale. What is the importance of isometric scale? A, B is the true length and A, C is the corresponding isometric length. I will write it here. AC is the isometric length of isometric length of AB. Isometric length of AB. How can I get the isometric length? Based on several trigonometric uh, ratios and calculations, you can find out that AC is equal to 0.816 of AB or you can approximately mark it as 82 percentage of AB. That means whatever you are getting in isometric projection will be only 82 percent of the actual dimension. 100 percent means it is full dimension. 82 percent means you are actually scaling down the drawing. So AC means it is somewhat less dimension of AB. So, if you consider any isometric projection and if you uh, verify the dimensions of that particular figure, it is very clear that uh, altogether you can say you are reducing the complete object into say 82 uh, percent in, in, in your isometric projection. That is what you are doing. So that is what I want to mention here, that is AC is equal to 0.816 of AB, approximately it is 82% of AB. Now, there is another term that is isometric view. One is isometric projection and another one is isometric view. What is the peculiarity of that? See, I have told you that when you, whenever you are preparing a drawing of isometric projection, you are actually reducing all the dimensions to 82%. Suppose you are using all the true, true length for drawing an isometric projection. You are not at all scaling it down. So you will get a figure with actual dimensions. That is come, when you are thinking about isometric projection, you can say that it is an enlarged dimension, but you are keeping the scale. Uh, there is a particular scale factor. So you are keeping it, uh, the, the proportionality is as the same. So, you are getting an enlarged view of the isometric projection. It is known as isometric view. It is known as isometric view. So, whenever you go for an isometric view, there is no need of isometric scale. In exam point of view, there will be two types of questions for you. Draw the isometric projections. If you are asked me to draw, draw isometric projections, definitely you have to draw isometric scale first. First you have to draw the isometric scale, then only you have to go for other constructions. What, what is other, the other con construction that we will discuss later. So first of all, you have to draw the isometric scale. If you are asked me to uh, draw isometric view in a particular question, there is no need of isometric scale. First you uh, under, you should understand the difference between isometric projection and isometric view. In isometric projection, using a scale, you are reducing the dimension. In isometric view, 
you are using actual dimensions for drawing the isometric view that is the importance so these are some of the preliminary ideas of isometric projections so i have told you how we are getting a cube the three sides of a cube in a particular view using that three faces we have arrived at the construction of isometric scale that is here this 15 degree here this 45 and dot here this 120 then we have found that ac that is one di uh, one dimension of ab that is isometric dimension of ab which is 82% of ab after that we have found what is the difference between isometric projection and isometric view suppose you are, you have to draw an isometric projection first of all you have to draw isometric scale how you will construct isometric scale the isometric scale can be constructed as the uh, it should be this ab should be of a higher dimension than the largest dimension of the problem in the problem see there is a square prism the base edge is 40 mm the height is 70 mm then ab should be more than 70 mm because the largest dimension is 70 mm then you can find out what dimensions you have to draw that you can mark here say here you, are, you have marked B now I am marking it as D from D I have to draw a line parallel to BC I have to draw a line parallel to BC so I will get AD dash AD dash so here AD dash is the isometric length of isometric length of AD isometric length of AD similarly you can find any dimension say for if, if you need 40 mm you can measure 40 mm along AB then you can find out the corresponding dimension if you want 70 you can measure 70 along AB then you can draw a line which is parallel to BC from there then that dimension along AC you will get the isometric length of from the beginning I have told told you that we are actually keeping the solid as the three faces of the cube or we can say we are keeping the solid in three axes which are mutually uh, inclined at 120 degree so how we are getting that 120 degree you can see that this is the cube from the cube you are getting 120 mutually inclined 120 degree axis I have drawn only the axis now I have removed the cube now I am having three axes they are mutually inclined at 120 degree in order to get a clear idea I have drawn a horizontal line here you are getting 30 and 30 from here how you have how you have to draw that's why I am marking this that is you are you have drawn a horizontal line from there you can take 30 towards here and 30 towards here then you can have a vertical line simply you can have the isometric axis see these three are the isometric axis there is no particular name or uh, difference for this axis but you are having isometric lines and non isometric lines what do you mean by isometric line any line which is parallel to isometric axis see this is an isometric axis so it is this line is parallel to this one so any line which is parallel to an isometric axis is an isometric line these two are isometric lines because this line is parallel to this axis this line is parallel to this one now what do you mean by non-isometric lines the lines which are not parallel to any of the isometric axis are called non-isometric lines see here all these lines are inclined Okay, this is also inclined, this one is also inclined. So, these are all non-isometric lines. Now, one more thing you have to understand, isometric planes. That is what I have represented here. You can have mainly three isometric planes. So, one is horizontal isometric plane. What do you mean by that? You are already I have shown you 30 degree from the horizontal line. So, this is also 30. If you are considering these two axes, 
these two axes forms a horizontal isometric plane so whenever you are keeping the bases on a particular surface that especially horizontal plane there you are there you are using horizontal isometric plane we will discuss these things when we are doing the problems then only it will be clear to you but these are some of the fundamentals this is the horizontal isometric plane you are using only two isometric uh, axes using that you are getting horizontal isometric plane you are actually ignoring this vertical isometric axis consider here here you are having all the three say one is this that is going through 30 degree the other one is going through 30 degree and the vertical isometric axis is also there you can extend it towards the upper side that is what i have drawn see to, towards the upper side it is there similarly you are extend it to the upper side also when you are having a vertical isometric axis and a horizontal isometric axis you are getting a vertical isometric plane since this is at the left side i am marking it as vertical isometric plane left side here you are having vertical isometric plane right side here also you are having a vertical isometric axis and a horizontal isometric axis combining these two you are getting vertical isometric plane see whatever things we have discussed so far you can try yourself you can practice how you are getting isometric axis how you are getting isometric lines and how can you form isometric planes these things you can draw clearly and try to understand that then we will do problems from in the next class onwards thank you